Hello and welcome to Fiber Trek. My name is Sarah. Welcome. You are most welcome to my studio space here in the North Woods of Maine. I am looking forward to sharing with you all that I've been up to. This is going to include some reporting on my loom adventures, the baby quilt, and my knitting. For those of you that contribute financially to this podcast, a deep heartfelt thank you. It is extremely encouraging and humbling. I'm so glad that you all choose to spend some time with me. I'm so glad you're here. Let's catch up. So I am tucked up behind my loom, tucked up in my very cozy cabin on a very cold day in January. I think the temperature was negative 26 degrees Fahrenheit when we woke up this morning, which does not include the wind chill. And that became a real limiting factor on what our day could include, which mainly had to take place inside. So I thought, perfect, it's a perfect opportunity to kind of sink in and dive into a project that requires a little bit more setup and a little bit more time in process. I am very much accustomed to taking Ruby out multiple times a day, going for a walk or a ski, and sometimes that interruption doesn't allow that momentum to continue forward and really kind of dig in. Um, and so what is that project I'm digging into? I am finally getting ready to, or I am, um, threading the heddles of my weaving project. You might remember my friend Patty came up and helped me plan my project and we got as far into the process as slaying the reed. But all of these warp ends need to come through the heddles on the harnesses and get tied on to this back beam, tensioned, and then, well then the, you can potentially start weaving. So I thought, great, I'm going to today get half of the warp heddled, threaded, and then tomorrow I'll get the other half done. I still have a baby quilt to work on, and I should be doing that, so I'm going to. Um, the baby has arrived. She is very lovely, very cuddle cuddleable, and I had uh, really amazing auntie duties um, the day she arrived home. I did not have a quilt to lay down for her, though, which is slightly disheartening, but nonetheless, I am going to persevere and get that finished 
So you can see how inspiring this cold weather hibernation feel can be in uh, dividing up time amongst a number of different crafts. But back to this one. So my friend Patty has been very helpful. My friend Sue, who is also a weaver, has been really helpful. Both of them very much encouraged me to keep this piece of equipment. Uh, Rob and I were really on the fence about getting rid of it. And we brought it into the house and want to get a project on it want to use up some stash yarn on this, I think we could plow through some serious uh, yarn supply, which would be wonderful, and move it into something productive where one could enjoy it and see it. But since my friend Patty doesn't live up here in the north, I am leaning heavily into this book, Learning to Weave by Deb Chandler. I used this book when I initially got this loom, which was donated to a program I was working for, and that employer allowed me to take it with me when I left very generously and so I have very little investment in this aside from my time but I had this book and I used it to warp the loom then very long time ago and I also had uh, upon bringing this into the house had a subscription to Long Thread Media which I found very helpful they have weaving classes which are great reference a variety of different techniques etc but I like having this written reference. This is a very specific uh, set of instructions, very step-by-step, -step, and I like being able to go back and forth between the book and the loom itself, not necessarily having to hit pause and rewind, pause and rewind. If I wanna kind of uh, imprint a particular process or um, technique. So I, I don't, as I said before, have a lot of vocabulary or instructional expertise here. This is all an invitation and a documentation of how I moved through a, you know, unfamiliar um, process. So that's what we're doing. I'm trying to be articulate. I'm not sure how that's going. Uh, this particular book has not only a variety of warping instructions for different types of looms, an explanation of vocabulary, parts, assembly, etc. She also has projects so that you can work on different stitch patterns and different drafts, etc., etc. So it's a really great basic beginner um, uh, book. I'm going to continue here. As I said, I want to get half done and then I'm going to go into quilting mode and see if I can get some progress made on that. Right, so I'm going to continue threading these huddles and I'm going to add a log to the fire and I'm going to try to convince Ruby she does not want to go outside <laughs> for a romp. It hasn't taken too much convincing. She gets very excited and then she goes out and then she realizes, hmm, maybe not so much fun. Um, and after I get the last of this half of the warp done, I'm going to head into the studio and work on the quilt. And yeah, just slow everything down and revel in being home and um, in a creative, warm space. When we wake, hear the birds and see the sun. Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Oh, we know what we have, let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy, but things are finally right With you and I, the future is bright
If I wrote you a song, if I got every word perfectly weighted on a thin piece of paper, would it make any difference? Would it change for the better? If I wrote you a poem, if I posted a letter. excited that I finished the flimsy this weekend. There's still quite a bit of work to do to have a complete quilt, but all of the piecing is done and all of the assembling. Now on to backing and quilting and binding. I do have an idea of how I would like to quilt this. Karen of Just Get It Done Quilts has a video on kind of basic quilting stitches. Uh, or motifs, I guess, and I'm thinking something very just general and graphic, putting my walking foot onto my sewing machine and sewing lines, crosshatch, I'm not sure. I'm going to rewatch that video tonight, make some decisions, and I will do that on my home machine, and hopefully that will be done next weekend. I used Clara Jean for Stella Designs, Would You Gather Here, and I think that this fabric is still available if you do a Google search. I purchased mine from Hawthorne Supply in July. I know procrastination <laughs> ran deep on this one and although for no other reason than I think I don't I don't know why actually. Um, I really love the fabrics. This is a pinwheel block and a foundation paper piece square and a square block. So it wasn't like it was super hard to piece. I did design this myself and I mean not that that's not that it's a design. I literally just decided to put these two blocks together. Um, but I don't know what kind of the resistance there was. All the same, I'm really happy it's done. I love the way these uh, Fox uh, illustrations turned out and are very much highlighted. And I do love that the blocks are big enough in the pinwheel at the half square triangle. You'd still see some of the imagery that were, was included in the fabric line. I'm not sure what I chose for a background fabric but I just grabbed a, a beautiful sage green and I did do some different layouts and ultimately I landed on kind of putting together the same motif in one block with two foundation and doing dark light etc. So this ended up being uh, 7 by 8 so 56 squares total and these are 6 inch blocks so 42 by 56 really happy and looking forward to getting this project out of the books and on to or back to Madison's that I showcased a few episodes ago in Sarah Watts Firefly. So the children are very much on the forefront of all of the making right now and and it's a pleasure to look forward to that and they ask me about that. They're very appreciative so that's, uh, that's a real um, inspiring uh, bit of interaction with them. So it's time for Ruby Romp. Gotta get editing, but I'm very happy that this can be ticked off the piecing and assembling list. Hello and welcome to the knitting portion of the episode. I just wanted to reiterate how grateful I am for all of you that choose to spend some time here with me on my channel and on the vlog and a special deep heartfelt thank you for those that contribute financially. I am deeply appreciative of the, comment and the comments and the insights that you um, share with me and again that idea of taking the time to open up the computer, type it in, etc. It means so much. I have been feeling the demands and momentum of my professional world and my creative world and 
all of them are wonderful opportunities for problem solving um, and creativity. But I am behind the wave. I am behind the momentum and I'm trying to level up and, you know, not go racing through stuff. And so to do that, I decided I really just wanted to focus in on a couple projects. One for the quilt and one for Cameron, which is um, the sweater I've been knitting with him. So I'm going to share uh, my progress on the Dog Star. And I'm also going to talk about my most worn sweater this month, which is a bit of a surprise. And uh, yeah, and just how that ended up surfacing into my wardrobe. So Cameron's sweater, who is my nephew, is knit out of Plotolopi in the natural black and white color. It is an unspun yarn, if you're unfamiliar, um, Icelandic in origin. And I am knitting the Dog Star by Tin Can Knits, as I said. I am re-engineering the sweater from the top down, and I have finished the body and cast off in a one-by-one one rib. And I started with a seed stitch for the collar because it's just a preference for me. And I have picked up the sleeve and I am working on the calculations for the decreasing. I am thinking I'm going to take this with me when I travel uh, to the southern part of the state where I work and have Cameron try it on and then see if I can customize a little bit the arm length as well as the decreasing. So that is a real triumph for me. I think that this will um, be finished for him when he comes up to go ice fishing in a couple weeks with his sister and we'll give him an opportunity to test out and uh, really create an opinion about Icelandic wool yarn um, and his wardrobe. I am using a US 6 and I am knitting the 8 to 10 or 10 to 12 year old uh, sizing for him. So. Yeah, so this has been a focus for me. I have kind of put away all the other, sorry, there's a bunch of evening grow speaks and pine grow speaks out here, and so it's just really cool. And I put away a number of my other um, knitting projects. I mute the sleeve on the J sweater and the Kairuna by Ronnie Hakalito. Um, both waiting in the wings for me to finish this for him. And of course, if you watched my previous episode, you know that my niece is really looking forward to a Nicole shawl knit out of Manchalope, and I am waiting for that to arrive. So, what sweater surfaced for me? I have worn this almost every day, which is the Cardin by Jennifer Wood of Woodhouse Designs. I knit this out of a three-ply hand spun. I finished it this summer and I've been working on it for quite some time or I've been looking and thinking about a yarn for it for quite some time. And when I first finished it, I was like, this is great. And I kind of put it on a shelf and I didn't gravitate to it. But what I've been doing is every week I try to rotate through my sweaters and pack those that I want to try. So I'm constantly moving through my collection instead of just um, reverting to some of my most worn or available um, down here in my front hall. So I don't typically wear a jacket to work. I usually wear a sweater and a shawl. And then I have all my survival gear for cold winter in the car. So I have a down parka and I have my um, thin slit, uh, insulated boots, um, etc. So if I do end up breaking down or needing extra layers, I have them. But this has really worked out fantastically over my typical uniform, which is uh, just an Anne Carolyn smock um, and I have them in a variety of colors and textures and prints um, I make myself by Ellen Mason and designs and what I found is that this particular sweater just works really well with the cut of that tunic and it hits at the right point I love the shaping that this cable gives at the bottom I think this has a bit of an old world feel to it and it's um, feminine and I just, it's warm uh, thanks to the three ply and the cables. Um, and I just, I think that it's a really um, easy knit for cabling because you're knitting on a large needle. I think I knit this on a US 8 or 9. And um, yeah, some of the cables are very large and so you, they don't have a multiple um, row repeats. Um, but you do need to keep track because there are different types of cables. All the same, 
Uh, the neckline for me is really nice. It highlights, uh, it covers just enough of my shirt just to highlight my beads. So again, this thing, I just kept reaching for it and I've been wearing it ever since. So I would check out this uh, pattern if you're looking for a cable and she has a number of cable designs um, with these really beautiful necklines, which are my favorite um, on Ravelry and I'm assuming she has a website as well. On that note, I think I'm going to go make myself a cup of tea and see if I can finish that quilt. As I said before, I'm so glad you took some time to uh, tune in and I will see you in a few weeks. In the meantime, many blessings and fond wishes. Take care.